Hey everyone, it's me, Dee Dee, again. I'm actually on my screen porch now so that we don't have to take the chance of my dog becoming a viral video when she gets eaten by alligators. So I just wanted to join you today in a safe environment for my dog and talk to you a little bit more about the armor of God. You know, the last few weeks we've looked at the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes of the gospel of peace. This week, we're gonna take a look at the shield of faith. And I wanna to read to you the passage from Ephesians chapter six again. It's found in Ephesians six, and I'm gonna start in verse 10, okay? It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, take up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. So there's a difference between belief and faith. You know, belief is an intangible thing. It's a choice. But faith is active and action-oriented. I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but there was a, sh a subtle shift in the scripture passage that I just read. You know, in the beginning, the pieces that we've looked at so far, we were told to put on those pieces. But now we are told to take up the shield of faith. That shows an active process, um, that we are to take an active part in standing against the attacks of the devil. You know, faith is active. And, you know, we've all probably seen the illustration about the chair representing faith. You know, I can believe all day long that that chair will hold me. But faith is acting on that belief, okay? It's, it's putting my, my faith to work. You know, in James, in the book of James, he asks us a question in chapter 2, 14. He says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? So our actions prove our faith, okay? Faith is when we act like God is telling us the truth. You know, Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. You know, in this passage of scripture where Paul is describing the armor of God, there were two types of shields actually used by soldiers during those days. And one of them was a small round one about the size of a trash can lid. But most of the soldier's body would have been exposed and uncovered using that shield. The one that the apostle Paul is describing um, was about two feet wide by about four feet high. Okay, and it would cover the majority of the soldier's body. And when they were advancing against an enemy, the enemy would often shoot fiery javelins or arrows. The, some of the passages of scripture or some translations of scripture call them darts. Um, but anyway, the, so the enemy would shoot these flaming projectiles at the advancing army. Well, these particular shields that Paul is referencing had a feature built onto them where they had these hooks on the sides and they could actually link their shields together standing side by side and they would form what was called a turtle formation so they would get under these linked together shields and as the flaming arrows would come towards them they would be protected not only were they built to where they could link and be connected together but they were also built in such a way in layers that when soaked in water, they would retain that moisture on the inner layer. So when that arrow hit that shield, it would the moisture, the wetness of that shield would extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. And this scripture is a beautiful reference of how when we take up this shield of faith 
and we connect with other believers and we are linked together with other believers that we can extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy, the attacks of our enemy. Now I know that right now with everything going on, we can't be physically linked together. But that's the great thing about being in the family of God together. We are spiritually and emotionally linked with each other. And we have the power of God connecting us. And prayer is the tool that we use in doing that. Fortunately, in modern times now, we also have social media linking us together and connecting us um, and technology. So that's a really great additional feature that we have. Now, the Bible is full of heroes of the faith. And Hebrews chapter 11 is actually called the, um, the Faith Hall of Fame. So I encourage you to read, read that chapter, investigate the lives of the people that are listed in that chapter. Each of them had to make a choice. They could succumb to what they could not see, or they could trust God with it, you know, with, that with their enemies. We can trust God with our invisible enemy. We can trust God with our lives. We can trust God with everything we have, because faith is not about us. Faith is more about what you really believe to be true about God. You know, God is the object of our faith. Jesus taught his disciples that if they just had faith the size of a mustard seed, they could move mountains. So it's not the size of your faith that matters, it's who you have faith in that matters. And because God is faithful, we can actually have an active faith. Um, I want to read to you a paragraph out of our study book because Priscilla Shire, just, she just says it the way it was designed to be said. Let me read this paragraph to you. It says, listen to me carefully. If you are struggling to move forward in obedience to God, you do not need bigger faith. You just need to realize how big your God is. The more faithful and strong you believe him to be, the more willing you will be to depend on him. Your level of faith will always be tied to your perception of God. If your perception of him is faulty, your faith will be faulty. If your perception of him is on point, your faith will be too. You don't need more faith. You need more comprehensive and accurate view of the faithfulness of your God. So what is your faith founded on? Is it founded on the truth of God's word? Is it founded on the person of Jesus Christ? You won't go wrong with faith there. So if you are struggling with your faith right now, if you're struggling in your walk with God right now, I know it's hard being disconnected and separated like we have been, but get into God's word. Lean on the truth of his word. Stand on the truth of his word. Take up the shield of faith, which is the truth of God's word. If you want to have a stronger faith, read God's word and put that trust in the foundation of his truth. Miss you guys. Have a great day. Bye.